Um, let's keep talking about crossover parts. Uh, my last video we talked a little bit about capacitors you know it's a good idea to use the best capacitors that you can you can buy uh, you know given a budget for a particular set of speakers but a question I often get is what about resistors should I replace the wrist resistors in a crossover network and that's an interesting question and I and I don't have a you know I don't have an answer for that right away but let's think through some of the aspects of what a resistor does versus a capacitor to see if we can come up with a logical answer to this question. Um, first of all, capacitors, they, when, when you put a capacitor in line, it can certainly affect the sound. And the best way to demonstrate that is to, is to note the difference between a, a DC current resistance through a capacitor and an AC current impedance. Um, DC won't go through a capacitor, it's stopped dead, so it acts like an innocent resist, re resistor, an infinite resistor. Whereas alternating current um, will pass through a capacitor, albeit with the low frequencies filtered out. Um, and ideally it has zero impedance. Now the difference between resistance and impedance has to do with the resistance of electrical current in direct current versus alternating current and that's you know beyond the scope of this video but the the point is is the capacitor is a is really a big it, it can act like a big block in, for the signal coming through and as such it can impart you know sonic qualities um, that that can be bad you know, when they're in line, as with a tweeter, for, for a tweeter or a mid-range. But a resistor, on the other hand, a resistor, on the other hand, isn't like that. A resistor is basically a set of wires that are used to dissipate heat. Um, the resistance and impedance of a resistor are, are similar or the same. A resistor isn't designed to block direct current at all. It's just designed to, well, let's say slow it down. You're expected to get a voltage drop over one side in which place that current and energy will be depleted in, in the form of heat. That's why you have them, um, um, like here's a common resistor for a crossover network encased in a, uh, a material here that will get warm and it'll dissipate the heat. So will this impart sonic qualities to the sound? Well, the answer is theoretically yes, but in practice I'm not so sure. Um, and I'm going to say with one, with one exception to this, and that is, is that these resistors are often wound, wire wound circular like this through the material. And whenever you wire, whenever you wind a wire circularly, you can get a little bit of inductance. And inductance does filter out sonic qualities. Um, if you have a woofer that you want to restrict high frequencies to go to, you'll put an inductor in line with it, and that will filter out some of the frequencies. So um, with, a, with a simple resistor with a small set of loops like this, I'm not sure that you're going to get a lot of inductance, but it's indeed possible. So the first thing I thought to do is to go and look what the market says. And let's go to Parts Express and see what the market says about these resistors and see if there are low inductance resistors out there in the marketplace. So I just went to my favorite source for electronic parts, Parts Express, which I highly recommend to anybody that's uh, needing things like crossover caps and all sorts of speaker parts. And I pulled up their list of resistors and what do I find but you know a resistor very similar to the one I have in hand here and the prices are you know a dollar seventy nine but sure enough lo and behold if I go down they have here what are called non-inductive resistors which are nine dollars and forty nine cents so clearly there is a market for non-inductive resistors the question is, is can you hear the difference? And my gut tells me no, but my brain tells me there are people out there that have astute enough ears that actually can tell the difference. 
Um, I doubt that I would be able to because the inductance has to be quite low and would would not you wouldn't be filtering out much in terms of high frequencies for a simple inductor like this. If you've ever seen an inductor for a crossover, they're real big with a lot of wire rounds. Um, but clearly there are people out there that believe, and, and I'm going to stay on the fence on this one. I'm just going to say I, I don't know. Um, maybe on a certain set of speakers that have a lot of resistors in line, uh, certainly maybe you can hear a difference. Can I hear a difference? You know, my 61-year-old ears are probably not that good. So I'm going to stay on the fence on this one. If you want to replace your resistors and your crossovers, go ahead and do it. It's not going to hurt. If you want to replace with a better non-inductive resistor, go ahead. It's not going to hurt. I mean, these investments are very, very cheap. $10 for a couple of, $10 for a resistor and $10 for a capacitor and an expensive pair of speakers is not a big investment. So it might be worth it to some people. Anyway, um, let me know what you guys think, guys and gals. Do you do you feel it's important to swap out resistors and crossovers with better quality resistors, or do you think that this is just uh, you know not such an impact that most people will even hear it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks.